If you're wanting to buy jade, it's important that you know what you're buying. And to do that, you need to know how to tell if the jade you're buying is what you think it is. A quick search on the internet on types of jade and what constitutes a jade stone may leave you more confused than before you started down that rabbit hole. It doesn't help that many of the images on websites and blogs discussing jade are actually of aventurine, dyed green quartz, and emerald. So it's genuinely hard for the curious customer to find out what jade actually even looks like. If you're wanting to learn about jade, I'm sorry to tell you there is a lot of inaccuracy and misinformation online. But the good news is I'm a jade professional and I'm here to help. My name is Jordan with Jewels of the Trade and in this video I'm going to explain what jade actually is, the two gemstones called jade, and some notable origins of both. both jades. Yes, there's two. I will explain it. But if you're looking for a certain look or a certain price or certain attributes, it's important to know which jade you're buying. This is Jadeite Jade, an aggregate material principally comprised of the sodium aluminum silicate mineral called jadeite, or in some cases, one of the other very similar minerals known as omphacite and cosmochlor. Jadeite jade is usually a six and a half to seven on the most scale of mineral hardness, which measures resistance to scratching, making jadeite jade harder than steel. Jadeite jade is tougher than diamonds, as well as most other gemstones, meaning it is highly resistant to breaking. However, it's still a gemstone and should be handled with care. Nephrite jade can range quite a bit in hardness, but GIA says it's around a six to six and a half on the Mohs hardness scale, so we're going with that for the sake of simplicity. Nephrite jade is known as one of the toughest gemstones in the world and is harder to break than pretty much every single gemstone except sometimes hematite. Nephrite jade and jadeite jade can both vary in hardness and toughness depending on the stone. Gemologically, in the US, the only two gemstones that should be called jade are jadeite jade and nephrite jade. In some cases, there may be some debate as to what constitutes jadeite jade and nephrite jade, which I'll touch on a little later in this video. And disclosure of treatments is extremely important, however neglected by some sellers. But at the end of the day, quartz is not jade. Serpentine is not jade. Agate is not jade. And that's because those stones have a different chemical composition from jade, a different crystal structure, different attributes, and culturally, they're not considered jade. By the leading market in jade today, China, where the jade industry is over a $30 billion market. In the trade, we refer to non-jades that are posing as jade as jade simulants. And it's important to be able to distinguish them so that you don't accidentally overpay for a simulant worth much less with less desirable attributes. In China, some sellers may call any beautiful stone jade because the word jade to them means beautiful stone. The way the English language has adopted jade nomenclature has been confusing to say the least. But just know that if a Chinese seller is calling quartz jade, it's probably not because they're trying to rip you off. It's usually just a misunderstanding between the two languages. But with that being said, it's really important to be aware of if you're shopping for actual jade, meaning nephrite jade or jadeite jade. And unfortunately, sellers on Amazon, eBay, and Etsy have adopted this relaxed attitude towards the term jade, perpetuating confusion for American shoppers and sometimes even the trade. This leads to a lot of dyed green quartz being sold as jadeite jade and sometimes nephrite jade in the United States, sometimes for unfairly high prices. Dyed quartz is not as durable as jade, not as rare as jade, and they have very different properties. But distinguishing them without gemological testing can be very difficult because they share attributes such as sonority, being harder than steel, and appearance when quartz has been dyed. This video is about to get good, but first, let me know which of the two jades is your favorite in the comments. Nephrite jade has an incredible 8,000 year history in China and jadeite jade has a fascinating history going back who knows how far in Mesoamerica, having a history with seven known Mesoamerican civilizations, including the Olmec, Maya, and Aztec. Nephrite comes from all over the world and jadeite has less than 20 known sources on the planet, most of which aren't mined and if they are, they're usually not producing a notable quality in any notable quantity with the exception of about three mines. Nephrite often comes from Canada and China, but is also famously mined in New Zealand, Russia, 
Indonesia, and more. Jadeite jade on the American market mainly comes from Myanmar, also called Burma, but we're starting to see more Guatemalan jade on the market, which is very exciting. And you'll occasionally run into some Russian jadeite jade that's pretty cool too. But nine times out of 10, if you see natural jadeite jade in an American jewelry store, it's from Myanmar or Burma. Here on the Jewels of the Trade channel, we have a jadeite jade playlist and an ephrite jade playlist. If you'd like to dive in and learn more about those gemstones. But in this video, it's time that we focus on the types subtypes of each of the jades. Because of so much confusion surrounding jade types, we're gonna split this part up into three sections. Jadeite jade and nephrite jade by origin, famous terms for rare jades and what they actually mean, and finally, not jades. Pause. Before we dive deep into the colors and origins of jade, I want to encourage you to shop with your local independent jeweler for jade first before shopping online. If your local jeweler doesn't have jade, I recommend Mason K for guaranteed natural. They test it in everything. Jadeite Jade, and I recommend jademind.com for nephrite jade. I personally buy from both of these companies and will include links to their websites below. Burmese Jadeite Jade has a huge spectrum of qualities and colors and is really the major player in the Jadeite Jade market. Guatemalan jadeite jade often has a gray quality to it and is known for its gray to blue to green color range. And Guatemalan jade has a crazy history. It was hidden to the world for centuries and only relatively recently rediscovered. British Columbia nephrite jade is usually green. I don't believe there is any white nephrite coming out of British Columbia. Washington nephrite jade tends to be a blue-green. Big Sur jade from California can range a lot from green to blue to black. White is the most valuable color in nephrite jade, and it actually comes from a lot of places, including the Hotan River in China, the Kunlun Mountains in China, Russia, and more. Wyoming jade has a huge range, and they have some pretty well-established color terminology, like in the cases of sage, and olive. This is Wyoming sage, and this is Wyoming olive. Some of the finest black nephrite jade in the world comes from Wyoming and is called Edwards Black. Australia also has a lot of fine black nephrite jade coming out of the Cowell mine. My husband Hunter has this really fantastic jade bracelet as a part of his collection from Freshwater Jade that features nephrite jades from all over the world. The toggle is a Wyoming wind slick. The light green bead is from Taiwan. The more olivey green is from Yemen and that orange one there is Siberian. Then we have a bead from Wyoming, a Wyoming sage. Then a bead from Poland, a white bead from the Kunlun Mountains in China, an elongated green bead from Indonesia. This black jade here is from the Australian Cowell Mine. This light green is from Quebec in Canada. We have a bead that exhibits New Zealand snowflake very well here. This Canadian nephrite bead is from the Cassiar Mine. This is white jade from Siberia, Wyoming apple, California Big Sur, Indonesia, Canadian jade from the Yukon Territory, jade from Wyoming, Siberia, and Pakistan. Some of these lesser known jades can be seen at events such as the Tucson Gem Shows, the Monterey Bay Jade Festival and the Big Sur Jade Festivals in California, the Wyoming Jade Festival, and the Northwest Jade Festival in Seattle. I wanna take a moment to remind everyone that there is not a diamond festival in the US, there's not a sapphire festival in the US, but we have multiple jade festivals. So maybe that gives you an idea of the effect jade has on people. I'm including links to my videos of jade at the Tucson Gem Shows and the Monterey Bay Jade Fest below. Before we move on to controversial nomenclature for rare jade such as imperial jade and cat's eye jade, I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button and comment below any ideas you have for us for future gem related videos. Let me know what questions you want answered and what types of jade you want to see more of. Imperial jade is a really misunderstood term. In the jewelry industry, we use specific trade terms to refer to specific qualities of stones. Canary diamonds don't refer to yellow diamonds. It refers to a specific quality of yellow diamond. Pigeon blood ruby doesn't refer to red rubies. It's a particular hue of high quality fine ruby. And imperial jade doesn't refer to green jade. It refers to highly translucent, vivid dark green jadeite jade with even texture. To add to the confusion of imperial jade, some imperial jade may come with a lab report calling it omphacite jade or omphacite jadeite jade. This is because in the United States, we refer to fei choi as jadeite jade. And according to the Hong Kong Jade and Stone Laboratory, fei choi can be comprised of primarily jadeite, omphacite, or cosmochlor. 
So omphacite jade is still jadeite jade. The words are just really confusing. It's kind of a transliteration issue and maybe a disagreement between labs. Natural is another misunderstood term concerning jade. And it's really a poorly chosen term for what it means, but we're here now. In diamonds, natural refers to earth mined as opposed to laboratory created. In pearls, natural refers to pearls that have been created without human intervention. But in jade eye jade, as well as with most colored gemstones in general, natural means untreated. So natural jade means jade that has not been dyed, acid bleached, or polymer impregnated, or glued to another gemstone as a doublet or triplet, or treated in any other weird way. So in the case of a gemstone being earth mined but also treated, you wouldn't call it natural, you would call it genuine i.e. genuine sapphire with beryllium treatment or genuine jade with polymer impregnation. Still earth mined, but not natural in the sense of having the natural characteristics it had when it was originally mined. Cat's eye jade is kind of controversial, but we actually dive into that in another video, which I highly recommend watching. Link below. The term cat's eye jade usually refers to the chatoyant variety of nephrite, but whether or not it should be called jade is a heated ongoing debate. So if you like gem drama and super nerdy technical details, you really should watch my video on it. Some gemstones that are not jade include thulite, which is a zoocyte variety often called pink jade. Masitsit is a valuable stone that has jadeite in it, but it is not jade. Turkish purple jade or purple jadeite rock is a mixture of jadeite quartz and sometimes cinnabar. Stone to stone, there's going to be variation in the amount of jadeite in it. It forms an A contact zone. It's all kinds of nerdy, just like a geology thing. So is it jade? Because jadeite is an aggregate or a rock, sometimes there is controversy over what amount of jadeite makes a stone jade. There's other goodness in a jade stone, like albite and stuff. But how do you measure the amount of jadeite, regular person without a gem lab? And who decides if 80% is enough or if it needs to be 90% to be considered jade or 95? or 99. So that's a whole thing. For my professional applications, I would not sell Turkish purple jade as a jade, simply because I don't know how much of a specimen is actually quartz. And therefore, I don't know the characteristics of the stone and it just wouldn't feel right to me. But that doesn't mean I don't like the stone and wouldn't wanna have it as part of my personal collection. It's just important to disclose and educate when calling things jade. Words have to have meaning. Don't go anywhere, we've barely scratched the surface when it comes to jade. So stick around and watch our video featuring every natural jade seller at the Tucson Gem Shows. 